Welcome to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on the identity properties and the zero property. Before you begin, you should make sure that you have a good understanding of the basic operations, uh, addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, as well as operations with decimals and with fractions. So make sure you're good with those and let's get started. So first of all, what exactly is the identity property of addition? Now you might remember that in the title, I said the identity properties, which means that there's more than one. And the first one we're talking about is the identity property of addition. So first of all, what exactly is that? Let's say we have these five stars. What can I add to these stars that will not change the original value or the original identity of this number of stars? Well, that's pretty simple. I can just add zero. And that's what the identity property of addition says. So if I have five stars and I add zero stars, then I end up with the five stars I started off with. So basically think about the identity as what you're starting with, what we have in the beginning. What is here? We had five stars and we want that number to stay the same. Well, what could we add to that number? so that it doesn't change. That's pretty simple. It's just zero. And that's what the property says. It says when you add zero to a number, any number, the initial value doesn't change. And that applies for any number. So let's say we have, I don't know, 2.79 plus zero. That's gonna be 2.79. How about 512 plus zero? Well. We're adding zero to it, so that doesn't change, so we get 512. How about 0.463 plus zero? Well, again, we're adding zero, so the initial value doesn't change. That's gonna be 0.463. And how about x plus zero? Now I switched it up a little bit by throwing a variable in there. That letter is just called a variable. It can have any value, but it doesn't matter. Anytime we add zero, anytime we add zero to any value, we just get what we started off with. So x plus zero is just x. How about the identity property of multiplication? Well, let's say we started off with all these happy faces. Well, what can I multiply by that will not change my initial value, my initial identity of this number? Well, I can just multiply by one. Well, first of all, let's see how many happy faces we have here. Well, let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven happy faces. Well, what can I multiply eleven by that will not change eleven? Well, like we said, the answer is one. So eleven times one equals 11. So that's what the identity property of multiplication says. It says that when we multiply a number, any number by the number one, the initial value doesn't change. And when I say any number, I mean any number. For example, what if we had 3.68 times one? Well, we're multiplying it by one, so that won't change. That's gonna be 3.68. How about this one? We've got 623 times one. Well, we're multiplying by one, so this doesn't change. That equals 623. How about this one? 1.542 times one. That equals 1.542. Because I'm multiplying by one, so this number doesn't change. And how about Q times one? Again, I switched it up a little bit by throwing a variable in there, but the concept doesn't change. This variable can represent any number, and any number times one is the original value, so this is just Q. Now, we spoke about the identity property of addition, the identity property of multiplication, so now we're moving on to the zero property. Let's say I have these six sons. What can I multiply by to make this number of sons zero? Well, that's just zero. So if I have six sons times 
zero, I end up with zero. And this is no longer here. Because anytime I multiply something by zero, I get zero. And that's what the zero property says. When you multiply a number by zero, the answer will always be zero. And again, that applies to any number. For example, we could have the numbers 7.09 times zero. Well, we're multiplying by zero, so the answer is just gonna be zero. How about 1,206 times zero? Some students might get fooled because we have a bigger number here, but it's all the same. It's just gonna be zero because any number times zero is zero. How about 5.011 times zero? Well, again, it's times zero, so the answer is zero. And finally, how about W times zero? Again, I've got a variable here, and that just means this can represent any number we want, but it doesn't matter because we're multiplying it by zero, so the answer is still gonna be zero. Now, I don't want you to get confused. I put the zero property and the identity properties together because there are some similarities and some differences. It's important not to get confused. Here's what I mean. We've got the zero property and we've got the identity property of addition. An example of the zero property is 100 times zero equals zero. And an example of the identity property of addition is 100 plus zero equals 100. The reason why students get confused is because they see a zero here and they see a zero here and they think that they're the same property, but they're not. The zero property only applies to multiplication and it makes the answer zero. There's no such thing as the zero property for addition. However, the identity property of addition is not the zero property, even though it has a zero here. The zero here doesn't change the value we started with. So again, they're very different. The zero property uses multiplication to make the answer zero, but the identity property of addition, it uses zero by addition and does not make the answer zero like the zero property does, but it keeps the original value we started with in the problem. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. Hit the pause button and when you're done, unpause the video and followed by a three, two, one countdown, your answers will be displayed. Ready, set, go. So let's take a look at our answers. Number one is the identity property of multiplication. Number two is the identity property of addition. Number three is the zero property. Number four is the zero property. Number five is the identity property of addition. Number six is the identity property of multiplication. Number seven is the identity property of addition and number eight is the identity property of multiplication. So what did we learn from this lesson? The property that doesn't change the initial value is called the identity property. There are blank identity properties. Well, how many are there? There's two. The property that doesn't change the initial value when you add to it is called the identity property of addition. The number that is added to the initial value in the identity property of addition is zero. Remember, we can add zero to any number, any number at all, and that initial number's value will not change. The property that doesn't change the initial value when you multiply it is called the identity property of multiplication. The number that is multiplied by the initial value in the identity property of multiplication is 1. Remember, 
we can multiply any number we want by 1, and the answer will be that number that we multiplied. The property used when multiplying a number by 0 is called the zero property. When you multiply a number by 0, the answer will always be 0. Any number times 0 is 0. The zero property only applies to what operation? Multiplication. And what two properties use the number 0 in them? This is a tricky one. But remember, 1 is the zero property where we multiply by 0, and the other is the identity property of addition where we add 0 to a number. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.